Since the beginning of time, we humans have had to deal with snow. As cities and towns grew, there had to be a way to move snow to ensure supplies could be delivered and purchased from a mercantile. We started with horses and plows to move the snow to ensure that people could move from one place to another. Here is a picture of early snow plowing in Sweden in 1909. Early plows were attached to a cart pulled by a team of horses through the snow-clogged streets. Over the next several years, horse-drawn plows gained popularity and came into use in many other northeastern cities. Inner-city steam trains, having made their appearance several years earlier, now puffed and whistled their way through heavy drifts with giant plows attached to their front ends. Salt was used in a few cities, but was strongly protested because it ruined the streets for slaying and damaged the shoes and clothing of pedestrians. And now today, we have more advanced equipment that we drive. But how do we keep safe while we're out there plowing our routes? There's a couple things we can do. Let's talk about it. The first thing to know is that Governor Polis signed House Bill 19-1265 into law in 2019. This bill increases penalties for motorists who pass snow plows while in snow removal operations. First thing before we leave the house to go to work is dress for the weather. We need to think of the three W's for winter, wicking, warming, and weather. Wicking will be your first layer. This is to draw away moisture from the skin. This is usually a synthetic base layer. Then we move to the warming layer. This should be your insulation, so material like wool, fleece, or flannel. This keeps the body temperatures warm and the cold air out. If you get too warm, you can remove a layer. Then the final layer should be winter layer. This layer should not absorb moisture, such as a winter jacket. Also, make sure you keep your feet, hands, and head warm. 40% of your heat will escape from your head if not covered properly. And add a winter chill to the plummeting temperatures and you will really feel it. Next thing we should do is before we get to the route, we should be performing a pre-trip inspection to ensure our plow trucks or plow equipment is safe and ready to hit the road. Make sure that you check your plows and wing blades. Will they last the storm or do they need to be replaced? Is everything working correctly, such as lights, hydraulics, and those red tag items from a pre-trip? Has your fuel been pre-treated for negative temperatures? When entering the unit, remember to always use three points of contact. With snow and ice building on your unit, the three point of contact ensures that if your foot slips, you're still holding on and less likely to injure yourself. And remember to always wear your seatbelt. One, it is the law, and two, if involved in an accident, it will save you from possibly hitting the windshield or moving into the other seat. Now we know that the equipment's ready to go. Let's get to work moving that snow. One thing to remember is to go slow. There have been numerous studies that state plow trucks traveling at 35 miles per hour or slower ensure that the snow is not pushed into an incorrect area, such as sidewalks or over bridges, or that when salt is being dispersed, stays where you put it and doesn't scatter off the road. If you're new to the snow removal game, you should go even slower until you know where all the hazards are and you are comfortable with the route. Maybe you work on mountain passes or back roads at which point the speed should match the road that you're plowing. If we go slow, we can ensure the snow lands where we need it to, we don't cause huge snow clouds behind us, and that if we land on ice, that we can safely come to a stop. If you plow those gravel back roads, make sure your plow is set up for it. 
One suggestion is to lower your plow shoes, which will raise the plow blade. This way you can plow the snow, but not the gravel on the road. Maybe you'll be working with graders, loaders, or snow blowers. The speed won't seem to matter since the amount of snow needed to be moved will be more. Ensure that if you're working on mountain roads and pushing snow off the edge, that the snow's not landing on a road below you, which could come into contact with vehicles, people, or even structures. Also, make sure you know where the edge is. One foot too many can land you in a position you don't want to be in. The next thing to remember is no sudden stopping or starting. Give yourself time to stop in traffic and in poor visibility conditions. When starting from a stop, go slow to ensure that the tires keep tr their traction. If you're in traffic, maintaining distances will ensure the public's safety. By allowing room around you, the public has more space to maneuver in an emergency and hopefully keep you safe. If you are in a traffic area with buildings, make sure you don't pile snow against the buildings. Either push or pull the snow away from the buildings or barricades or even guardrails. The next thing is to stay alert. We all understand during a bad winter, we get tired. To stay alert, you can ensure the safety of yourself, your equipment, and the traveling public. Make sure you get a good night or day of sleep, eat a good meal, and have high protein snacks with you. Some say not to drink caffeine, but being on a plow crew, coffee is usually the go-to. Make sure you maintain your caffeine level throughout your sh shift so you don't have a drop causing you to get sleepy. Also, if you are too sleepy and can't keep going, notify your supervisor immediately so they can make plans to ensure your safety. Maybe a 15 to 20 minute cat nap would help. Another issue that has come up in the past, don't use cruise control while plowing snow. This can lead you to lose control of the plow truck. Any type of self-driving devices on your plow truck should be turned off while plowing. This way you can ensure that you don't lose control of your plow truck and that the plow truck can maintain being used during future snowstorms. We shouldn't tailgate while plowing. Safety is our priority and this could cause you to lose control of your plow truck and cause crashes. Maintain a safe distance from traffic in front of you. And what about those people that like to tailgate you? That is one thing we cannot control. But when you find someone tailgating you, slow down, so maybe they'll go around. If you are sanding, most likely they will get pelted by the sand. If you're not sanding yet, do not turn it on just to get them to back off. This will cause your agency to spend their budget on windshields. Also, this could cause accidents if the people behind you slam on their brakes and slide. Another part of winter driving safety is backing up. We all have heard throughout different agencies that backing up should be minimal. We all know we have to do it from time to time. We all have blind spots no matter what we're driving for the winter. So when at a shop, ensure you have a spotter to help you out. Or if you back your truck into the shop so you can just pull out in the morning, ensure there is a spotter to help you in. We want to check around our units before backing up. If you park somewhere like a gas station or a fuel stop, ensure that you can pull forward without having to back up. But what happens if you're out on the road and you have to back up? Ensure that no one is behind you and go slowly. One good thing to do before backing up is to sound your horn, two short beeps. This notifies everyone that you're backing up and to steer clear, check your mirrors and go slowly. So in review, winter driving safety is important. A good night's sleep, healthy snacks with water 
and properly dress for the weather, weather is just the beginning. Proper maintenance of your snowplow unit, maintaining a safe distance and speed to avoid a crash. Be cautious when plowing snow on back roads with steep edges and ensure when you're backing up that you are clear. A successful winter season can happen as long as we all work as a team. Ensure that everyone, including the traveling public, is safe and can get home. And of course, we want the crew home safe and sound after a long day of plowing. Thank you for attending the Colorado LTAP Tailgate Talk. Until next time, bye!